This message was given to me while I was in Africa doing a series of meetings, and we had such a profound visitation. I think the whole church wondered what has happened, why has God shown up like this. The message that night was a message I spoke called God's Purpose is Transformation. You know, I remember years ago, I was in Africa, actually in the Arusha, Tanzania area, and I was traveling uh, by car. I think we, I had a team of missionaries with me. We were looking for uh, some kind of a, a game park or something along that lines. And the more we drove in the back country, the loss, more lost we got to the point where we drove for four hours all over the area trying to find the correct road. And I know we saw some beautiful sights and we saw some wonderful people. And every time we stopped to ask directions, the Africans would always say, oh, it's just a little bit further. You're almost there. And we drove around four hours with those directions. Later, I found out that the African custom is if you're lost, they're never going to tell you you're lost. They're going to say, hey, you're almost there, a little further and you'll be there. It's a way of encouraging that lost person. That was kind of funny as I think back on it, although it wasn't funny at the time. But I realized something is that we ended up on the road that we were on. In other words, if you're lost, you're going to go where that road takes you. No matter how bad you want to be somewhere else or no matter what your goals or purpose was, you're going to end up on the road that you're on. And so tonight I want to ask you a question. What path are you on? What road are you on? Are you heading to a path that takes you to the destination that you want to arrive at? I also want to ask you this question. Make sure you're on the path to get you where you want to go. What are your goals? What are those things in your life that you desire? Is it to know your God? Is it to know His ways? If that is your goal and your desire, if you're a born-again believer and you truly desire to know your God, then my question to you tonight is, are you on that path to get to that place? Are you doing the things it takes to get to that intimate relationship or that knowledge of God? Are you cooperating with God's plan to form you into His image? Because clearly that's going to be important in terms of your relationship and His will to form His image in you. Let me ask you this question. Who is your God? Do you know who He is? Do you have a relationship with Him? Do you know His purpose? Do you know His desires? Do you know His heart? Do you know what He wants you to be doing? These are all important questions. If we want to accomplish God's purposes, if we want to accomplish God's plans, then it's important that we know what He wants. And I can tell you tonight that we have lost the mission of God in the meetings of God. In other words, we're here at a meeting tonight in this church. This is not the mission of God. We are here to equip you for the mission. And the church has become so focused on meetings and hosting meetings and speakers coming to meetings that we've forgotten that the mission of God is out those doors. The mission of God is to go into all the world and make disciples. So we've lost the purpose of God in meetings such as this that we're doing tonight. Do you know how God's going to accomplish His plan to prepare His image in you? Do you know what His desire is for each and every one of us? We've forgotten what that was about. We've forgotten that we weren't just saved. We've forgotten that Jesus never said, get saved, receive eternal life. Jesus always preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is inviting you to enter that kingdom. Those words, 
the kingdom of heaven. Those, those words is at hand literally mean that Jesus came to join you to his kingdom. Now, what is a kingdom? Well, we know, first of all, a kingdom has a king. And in a kingdom, uh, we don't have a kingdom in this country. Many people don't really understand what a kingdom is. But in a kingdom, it exists and it operates for the purpose of extending the king's will. Well, what is the king's will? His desire is to not just see people saved, but that they would come into a reconciled relationship with him and then would allow him through his Holy Spirit, which he's put inside of us, to form his image in each of us. Now, once we move down that path, once we become uh, accomplished in that a knowledge, then his mission changes for us that we would help others to be formed into his image. Um, Jesus prayed for us also in John chapter 17, verses 21 and 22. He prayed for you and me that we would uh, know him and the Father, we would be one with him and the Father, and we would be one with him by entering into his glory that he had given us. And so we see the glory's aspect is important to understand how to become one, to become intimate with God. Well, what is the glory? We're going to talk about that in a minute, but essentially it is the manifestation of God's nature and character that God uses to form us into His image. Paul tells us this in 2 Corinthians 3.18 when he says we are changed from glory to glory. Now, when we lost the purpose of God, and hear what I'm getting ready to tell you, when we lost the purpose of God, we lost the glory. <laughs> when we lost that that desire to be formed and become like Him, to inhabit His glory, to have His glory inside of us, when we lost that focus, that, that concentration, that purpose, and the purpose to form others into His image, we lost His glory. This is what God spoke to me in Africa. You remember, God judged Israel by removing them, yes, into a foreign country, but more importantly for the Israelite, we see this in Psalm 42, as he says, as a deer pants for the water brook, so my th soul thirsts for you. Israel was judged by being removed from the glory of God. And so we see that God's purpose is a purpose of transformation and His glory is integral in that process. Now let me ask you a question now that we've kind of talked about who is your God and what is God's purpose. What is your purpose? What do you desire to do? Let me define purpose for a minute. Purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or which something exists. For example, if we see a painting on the wall and we come up to the painting and I said, well, what do you think the painting means? You says, well, Steve, to me, this painting means uh, peace. And I look at it, I said, well, to me, it means joy. And we maybe we debate that, but then here comes the artist, the one who created it, and he says, well, here's what it, the painting means. This is why I painted it. And so then we find the proper interpretation or purpose of that work. Well, we know who created you and me, who created the heavens and the earth. We know God did. So God is the one that defines the purpose. He's the one that defines what our purpose is. And so when God says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and let me read that here for you. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. The key word I want you to focus on tonight is this word that says, Let us make man in our image. 
Now that's an interesting word because the word in our image is the Hebrew word that is Strong's number 6754. The word is actually teslium. And it actually means not a picture of, as we normally look at that verse and we think, well, God's going to make us in an image. But wait a minute, God doesn't have image. He doesn't have a picture, a form. Uh, but the, the Hebrew word and the Hebrew mindset in that word literally means in the function of God. So God created you not to look like Him, but in His function. Now, what is that function. That function is to be formed to transform everything around you, including yourself, because you see, that is God's function. Everywhere we see in the Bible where God visits people or, or situations, He transforms the people around Him. Even Jesus, as He walked the earth, transformed everyone that He talked to and touched, either in a good way or a bad way. So we see that in our image means that God created us with a function of himself to be an agent of transformation. Now this verse goes on to say this. He says that he uh, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now the word likeness is the Hebrew word uh, Strong's number 1823. I'm going to pronounce it demuth. It may be demuth. Emuth. But the word there literally means to have a resemblance of the character and nature of God. In other words, that we would have the function of God and that we would literally be a, a representative of God's nature and character on the earth. Now, the word tells us in Psalm 51 verse 10, that God created me a clean heart. We find in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you three things. He says, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit, and then I will put my spirit inside of you. You have been totally transformed if you're a born-again believer. God has created a new creation. And your God's desire is to put His nature inside of you. And that's what in His image and in His likeness means. Well, in the very first chapter of Genesis, we read that God created you and I to be an agent of transformation. That we're transformed and that we're to help others transform. Why should we be surprised because Jesus said in Matthew 28, go into all the world and transform people by making disciples. He said in Acts 1.8, wait for the power so you can be my witnesses. Witnesses to what? To transformation. And then we find out he also created us to carry his likeness, his glory. We read this in Isaiah 43 verse 7, that you and I were created for God's glory, for His nature, and for His character. Now that we've discussed God's purpose, what about ours? Why do we exist? Uh, what is our purpose? It is literally to display the glory or the image of God to others. And this is what God is forming us into. This is God's great desire that we be changed. This is why Paul says, I am being changed in 2 Corinthians 3.18 as I'm writing the verse because the tense of the verb there means present continuous tense. So Paul is saying as I'm writing this verse, I'm being changed from glory to glory. Wow. We see God confirm these Genesis verse in Romans 8.29 when he says, For those he foreknew, he predestined to be formed in the image of His Son, who He, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brethren. The very first messages that Jesus preached was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
He said, repent because you're not living in the kingdom right now. You're not living in a life of transformation and you're not helping others to be transformed. So join this kingdom, join this mission and enter in. And then he goes down in that passage of Matthew and he says, now come after me, follow me. Now, if you look those words up in the Greek, follow me in, in that context, Jesus is saying, come and do what I do and take on my mission, my purpose, a purpose of transformation. Hallelujah. And then he goes on the rest of that passage after he says, follow me. And he says, I will make you. You can't make yourself. God says, I will make you. If you're transformed, if you take on the image of God, if you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, you won't have to learn. You will become a fisher of men. Wow, when I cooperate with the Spirit of God, I'm going to be a demonstration of the very purpose of God. We see these great promises throughout the Scriptures. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be provided to you, meaning clothes, housing, all your needs. If we're in the kingdom, if we're taking advantage of God's purposes in our life, if we're being discipled and discipling others, yes, that word that we've all try to throw out because we don't like it. it. It seems burdensome. That word is the very purpose of God on the earth today, in the church today, is to disciple people like you and I, and then us to help others to grow and to learn what we have done. So our purpose, number one, is to be reconciled to God in relationship. But once that happens, he then says, now I want to form you as you spend time with me, as you get in my word, as you spend time in prayer, as you renew your mind. I'm going to transform you and I'm going to put you, bring you into my image. And then once you've done that, once that's starting to happen in your life, then I want you to bring others Bring them to you. Tell them what I've done for you. Tell them of the joy. Tell them of the abundant life. Then we become those witnesses in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that he's talked about because the power of God, the glory of God will be resident in our life. What does having a purpose of transformation mean to you? How does that impact you? Are you tired of going to meetings and just hearing a message and going home and, and, and nothing changing? Are you tired of those same burdens in your life? The, those past experiences that you can't ever seem to get past? Are you tired of not experiencing supernatural power? Are you tired of not seeing the miracles and the signs and wonders of God that should be natural components of your life? I can assure you that we see these things in Africa where the purpose of God, transformation, is being relived and restored back to the church. We find this calling to transformation throughout the Bible. It's nothing new. There are seven action verbs in Matthew chapter 28, but there's only one in the imperative command. The words to make disciples. He's calling us to do this. You've lost the glory, pastor or person. You've lost that manifested glory. Yes, read the Old Testament. We've experienced it in, a, in our ministry in Africa since 1999 when we begin to discover this truth. This is why I'm, I'm uh, having this video put out on the internet is I want people to realize what God's after, what He desires, is He wants us to be those witnesses and He wants His glory in our churches and in our lives. But we will not have the glory if we do not restore the mission 
of life transformation or spiritual growth or the word you probably heard familiar, discipleship. We have lost the priority of transformation in our churches. Now, if we read in the Bible, Paul rebukes the Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. He rebukes them for their immaturity. And he rebukes other churches throughout his ministry for not growing spiritually. And Paul spent most of his time encouraging churches to grow. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, I have been made new. I am a new creation. God has transformed me. All things have become new. All the old things have become old and faded away. The past is gone. I'm a new creation with a new mission and a new purpose. Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 says this, He has reconciled all things to Himself. If you continue in the faith, that's what it says in verse 23. What is this faith? Biblical faith is dependence on truth. What is the truth? Well, in this message, the truth is God is a God of transformation. He's put that nature and character in you. He's put that function in you. And so if you want to embrace the truth, if you're going to live by faith, you can't go out and do whatever you want to do. You have to do what the king says. You have to do what God says. This is why Romans, Paul says after that incredible book, where he gives us all that great doctrine. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Paul says this. He says, Therefore, don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, let me tell you what your new creation is. Let me tell you what your function is. Let me tell you what you need to be thinking. Church, because we've lost this mission, we have lost the power, the presence, and the glory of God. Your soul longs for this to be restored. God longs for this to be restored. God spoke to me very clearly that He will not restore His glory to the church until the mission of discipleship, life transformation is restored. How should God's purpose of transformation impact your life. We must make it a priority to develop our relationship with God. Number one, that must be the priority. Do you have a relationship with God? Do you truly know God? Do you relate to Him like a good friend? He wants that kind of relationship with you. He doesn't want it to be something that has a whole lot of rules and regulations. He just wants a friendship. He wants a, a deep relationship with you. Secondly is, God wants you to take in His will. What is that? To be formed into His image. He says that in Genesis 1.26 and Romans 8.29. To be formed into His image. And then thirdly, once you've gotten there, He wants you to take on the mission of life transformation of His kingdom. Go into all the world, it says, and make disciples. We have a priority. We have a calling. We have a mission to help others be transformed into His image. How are you doing with that plan and purpose? You say, well, Brother Steve, I'm not really doing too good. And so, what do I need to do? I hear this word, and I feel it in my spirit. What do I need to do? Let me give you some things. Number one, repent for the bus busyness, laziness, isolation, discouragement, futility, and religious practices. Repent right now, tonight. And know that repent means to change your direction in your mind. Number two, we must prioritize God's truth in our lives. We must desire truth, as it says in Romans 1, 28. Because if we don't desire that truth, God says He's going to give us over to a debased mind. Number three, we must desire and seek God for His truth. 
the story I told you about the painting, today society thinks everybody has the truth. That's not true because everybody didn't create each other. God created us. God is our author. He is our creator. And so he determines what the creation is about. And he says that he desires relationship. He desires you to be formed into his image. And then he wants you to help others to be formed into his image as well. Yield to his truth by not just receiving it, but believing it. And begin to move forward. Don't just know, but believe. Believe it until your actions reflect that belief. Our mission in these last days is to be authentic Christians being transformed by God. I can tell you from the years in Africa that this life transformation, it works and it will impact the lives of everyone around you. What do we need today? What is the great need of the church? Well, I can tell you very simply, people are hungry and desiring to see examples of life transformation. I wish I could bring the people in our church just up to testify to you, to tell you what God's done in their life over the last several years. It's astounding. It's no secret, but here it is. The Holy Spirit wants to control. Control. The Holy Spirit wants to control the process of making disciples. How do you do that? <laughs> well, you listen to this video and you respond uh, to this website, give me a call. Uh, we will be glad to help anyone to answer the call to go into all the world and make disciples. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time. God, I pray you would draw your people to this video. God, I pray that you would do a mighty work in their lives. You would convict them, God, that there is life and there is truth, there is hope if they will but come after you. Thank you, God, for what you're doing on this earth today. Thank you for what's going to be happening in people's lives as they begin to respond and answer the call. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessed promises and truth. In your powerful name we pray. Amen. If you'd like more information, go to www.stephen, that's with a P, stephengrayministries.org. We'll be glad to hear from you. God bless you.